and then let's install a suitably yellow operating system on it. Hmm. We're sorry. All systems are busy now. I want to put this at the start of the video, just so people don't flood into the comments and yell at me. Two things. One, I already started and finished this project before Action Retro had actually made his video. And if you don't believe me, here is an Internet Archive copy of my Google search appliance dated June 30th as the upload date. And two, you probably shouldn't connect this to the open Internet. It hasn't been updated since 2019 and is just really riddled with security bugs. Okay, so with that all out of the way, let's get on to the actual Google Search Appliance. This first version is from 2008, and it's based on the Google Search Appliance Developer Virtual Machine. The Google shipped in 2007 or 2008. There's conflicting evidence of which year. If you already know a little bit about the Google Search Appliance, you will know that it's just a Dell server. And to that end, the software is just CentOS. It's a derivative of Red Hat, and then some Python and Java code for Google searching. I just wanted to lay that all down, that this is really just a Linux server. Mostly so the next part will make sense and not seem like black magic. Now, for those of you that have done your homework, you might know that the Dell R710 did not actually come out until 2009, so this version, version 5, would not run on it. And as Action Retro points out, these devices usually have their software re-imaged, their firmware flashed back to regular Dell servers. But what if we could get that firmware? So here's the final update, Google Search Appliance 7.6, released in 2019. Thanks to that Google Search Appliance developer virtual machine, we have some keys that let us do some fun things, like decrypt this firmware update. So once we decrypt that, it's basically just a zip file. Once we extract the zip file, it's full of RPMs which are just programs you can install on CentOS. Now, if you're like me and you have nothing better to do, you could install these one by one and begin wiring everything up and you would end up with your own completely functional Google search appliance. Thankfully, my friend Dusty wrote a Python script that does all of that for you. The link to this GitHub repo is down below. And I'm also just going to go through quickly how this thing works, how you install it. Yes, I am using a virtual machine. I don't have $1,200 uh. to buy one of these in actuality. On that note, I also have a Patreon. It is $1 per month. If you enjoy weird Linux necromancy, please feel free to sign up. It would really help me out as an unemployed creator. All right, so we're just going to name the VM. And I know this should be 7.6, but I filmed this at like 4 in the morning, so just forgive me. I'll fix it later. Boy, I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. We're going to use an Arch Linux ISO to boot this, because that's what Dusty instructed me to use. Unlike most VMs, we can't actually use Vert IO until after we've installed the image, just because it's using Grub 0.97. If you run this on real hardware, you don't have to worry about this. This is just for virtual machines. We're going to give it a disk of like 200 gig, which is probably more than we'll possibly need. And for CPU cores, we'll give it 16 cores. We only want one socket because we only have one physical CPU. Again, if you're installing this on bare metal, you don't need to worry about this. For RAM, we're going to give it 32 gig because that's about what these machines shipped with. And then we'll leave networking alone. We'll hit finish. And now once this populates in the list, we're going to add just a second network card. Originally these things shipped with four network cards, of which three were used. Only two of them are actually required though. One is to talk to your network, and the other is for you to plug a computer directly into for the initial setup. There is one small change we need to make to the Arch Linux bootloader is we need to tell it to turn off predictable interface names. Which just means that the Ethernet cards are going to be named ETH0 and 1, rather than some weird long string that's unique to each virtual machine or things like that. Once it boots, you'll need to install some more packages that are listed on the GitHub page. I did recommend to Dusty to 
just add that to the installer that it should automatically install those packages. But once that's done, it'll begin downloading and decrypting the image. And I do want to stress this is still hosted by Google servers. So if they take it down, this might no longer work. I'm sure someone will put an archived copy of that firmware up on Internet Archive. However, I don't think Google cares nearly enough since they end of life this thing six or seven years ago and the URLs still all work. Next up, it'll begin partitioning the hard drive and then mounts it and then it crashes because this is Arch Linux and it doesn't have a way to open RPMs by default. And also that was not listed on the GitHub page. So I submitted that as some feedback to Dusty and hopefully by the time you run this script, it'll all be fixed. So we're just gonna install RPM support and then we will run this script a second time. Now it's gonna install all those RPMs and as the description says, this will take a while, go get a coffee. This took me like 10, 15 minutes. So I just went off and did other things. Eventually, once it's extracted everything, it will begin wiring up all of the various services, aka programs that run on the server. Once again, I want to stress that the environment that it sets up is effectively a developer version of the Google search appliance. So there's a ton of test accounts and other telemetry data that are left in this. You really don't want to run this on the open internet and it may still phone home to Google and let Google developers into this machine. I have no idea if they would notice or care, but you may want to keep that in mind if you deploy this in an environment that has access to the internet. From this point on, it's not super interesting. It's just wiring up the remaining services. So let's go ahead and just skip ahead to the end. All right. Once it's finally done, it will give you a warning that it might take about 20 minutes after you reboot it. In reality, mine took like 30 seconds. I guess that just depends on how fast the machine you're running this on is. One last thing that I need to do, just because of the way this virtual machine is set up and is connected to my retro network project, is I'm going to attach both network cards to a network that has a Windows XP computer on it and nothing else. The reason I'm attaching both is because of that change we made to the bootloader with Arch Linux. Sometimes the Ethernet interfaces can get flipped around, so Ethernet 0 becomes Ethernet 1 and vice versa. Again, if you're on real hardware, this probably won't matter. It's just a tweak I need for my specific setup. All right, so we're now in Windows XP. I'm just waiting to get an IP address from the Google server, and then I'll just check that I can ping it. Perfect. and. I forgot the port, so let's go to 11111. We're going to accept the license agreement. Got to scroll through all the way to the bottom, and then we can accept. Next up, we just need to fill in some details. So we're going to set this to be a gigabit network because we're on a virtual machine. It's always gigabit. I'm also going to change the IP address that it picked out because we're replacing the old server with this one. We also need to set the static DNS and we need some kind of email server, although it doesn't need to be a real one. So you can just kind of put whatever you want here if you don't have a mail server running. Same goes for the email address that the server will use. You can just kind of put whatever you want. Then we'll also need to set a password. I'm just going to call it retro and then add an email. Again, I'm just making one up. Unless you're running LDAP, and if you don't know what LDAP is, you are probably not running it. Just set it to local authentication. That just lets you log in from the web browser. And then because I took so long getting that IP address, I have to do this again. So let me just skip ahead real quick. For some reason, when you hit continue, it takes about 15 seconds for it to confirm everything. And then it'll show it here in bold for you just to double check your work before you commit it. Now that everything's dialed in, we can disconnect, quote unquote, our computer from this search appliance, and we can just connect to the admin interface as a regular user. One last thing I also need to do is since I was running version five for a couple months now, we're gonna take all of the URLs that it knows to index, and we're gonna actually migrate those into the new version. Again, this is not something you will need to do, but this also shows two things. 
One, the UI design changes. This era of Google really reminds me of when they tried to make everyone use Google Plus for some terrible reason, which probably kind of tracks because version 7 came out around 2013 and then they started winding it down after that point and just kept updating it incrementally with bug fixes rather than new features. The other reason is this shows you how to add websites that you want to index because this will not just index the entire internet for you. You need to tell it what pages do you want to put in your index. Keep in mind this was designed for corporations. So in theory, your IT administrator would add your company's wiki, their intranet, and all the other various places that had documents and things. And then the server would crawl and index those in this same way. So in this case, we've imported about 20 different websites. And it does give me a warning because a couple of members, their DNS servers were offline when I did this. Initially, I thought this was an error with the network, but after reaching out to them, they just told me that their servers were offline for various reasons. So I had to leave this running for a few hours for it to index everything, because by design, it will try to only index about four pages per second. The idea being that it doesn't want to slam your company's servers, particularly if they're already in use by your employees. So this is something you would probably want to run overnight in a corporate setting. For us, it's fine. It just means we need to wait. Three hours later. Once we come back, the first thing it does is yell at us about all the performance things and the websites it couldn't find, but also shows us the graph of crawled URLs. And we have already reached over 40,000 pages that have been indexed, although that's with 7,000 errors of some kind. So I'll probably need to fix that later. But it seems to be working. It's only going at six pages per second. I did try setting this to 99999, but that didn't seem to have any effect. So your mileage may vary. If you're able to get it to index faster, please comment below and let me know how to change it, what values I can actually send this to. And finally, let's try searching. So if we look for AIM, we get results from ShivaNet, who run Retro AIM server. We can, of course, look for my website, which should show up, as well as a couple pages about it. And then finally, there is a forum on the network, which is probably where those 40,000 pages came from, and most of those errors. I don't really have a good outro for this, this Google search appliance is just part of a much, much larger project that myself and currently about 20 people at time of recording have been working on for nearly a year. So I very much want to talk about that, but not until it's ready. So if you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe. I have a massive project coming that'll probably be ready very soon as soon as we have access to fiber optic internet to host it, just so we have enough bandwidth for everyone involved. Finally, I just want to shout out Dusty for building the Python script that made this not so much possible, but just way easier than constantly throwing things at the wall and trying to piece this back together bit by bit. He essentially just reverse engineered Google's own update scripts and rewrote them as required. So massive props to him.